This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. I'm Greg Salazar, and I'm going to fix it up on this tin's fix and flaunts. All right, let's go. So essentially what the customer told me on this one is that it basically just wasn't turning on at all. There wasn't any signal coming from the PC whatsoever. So we did a little bit of troubleshooting over the phone. We did things like clearing the CMOS. We checked the power button was working, that kind of thing. And nothing really seemed to work. So we've got to really find out what's gone wrong with this and how we can fix it. But perhaps it might be useful to know what's actually inside the PC itself. So as you see here, we've got a Corsair TX650M. This is a gold rated power supply. We've got a PowerColor RX 6700 graphics card. I believe there's a Ryzen 5 5600 CPU. And we've also got what looks like a Gigabyte B550 Gaming X. Uh, motherboard and about 16 gigabytes of RAM. In this case, I believe this is a Bit Phoenix Nova Mesh. So as any good PC repairer knows, the first thing to do whenever you have a fault is actually to confirm that the fault even exists in the first place because there's a lot of user error out there. We need to make sure that there's actually a fault before we go fixing something that doesn't actually need to be fixed. So let's just try powering on as a first step. So we're gonna take our power cable and we're gonna just slink it in the back. So yeah, absolutely nothing. Look, I'm pressing the power button, look. Absolutely nothing. So a sensible first step in a PC that's not booting is to do a clear CMOS. Now in a non-powering on computer, this is actually pretty unlikely to get you anywhere, but it's really quick to do. So let's do it with our handy long reach screwdriver here. And we'll swap over to our action cam. So using the action cam here, we can have a quick inspect for any obvious damage. So just looking along the bottom there of the motherboard, can't see any obvious problems. Let's see if we can illuminate that a bit better. That all actually seems to be plugged in fine. Doesn't seem to be any problems there. I can't see any obvious damage on the motherboard anywhere. I don't see any burnt traces or anything like that. Nothing obvious where it's gone up in smoke. So there's nothing here that I can think might be causing the problem. And the clear CMOS header is here. So let's go ahead and bridge the gap with the screwdriver. I usually just twist it a smidge from side to side to ensure a good contact. The other way to do it is obviously to take the CMOS battery out of the motherboard, leave it for 10 to 20 minutes. That will also reset it. Usually the clear CMOS does the same thing though, so I'm not gonna bother with the battery right now. Let's try booting it up again. Let's flick on the power supply and press our power button. Yeah, still absolutely nothing. Nothing's lighting up, nothing's happening. So once I've found out that the CMOS isn't working, the next easiest thing for me to swap is the RAM because I've got loads of RAM lying around, obviously run this computer business, and it's something that takes about five seconds to swap over. And if this is the problem, it's a really quick and easy fix. So we're just gonna put one stick in because that's all you need to boot a computer. So we're gonna take this stick out and then we're gonna remove the two that are currently in there. We're gonna smash it on the table as well, apparently. The Olo stick is now going in. Okay, so now that that RAM stick is nicely seated, let's try again with the power. Yeah, still no good. So yeah, still no good, still not booting up. What's next? What are we gonna do next? Now, if your PC isn't powering on at all, it's not making any effort to turn on, you're not seeing any lights, you're not seeing any fan spin or anything, most of the time this is a power supply problem because nothing is even being initiated before there's an error. But the things you can check before having to go out and buy a replacement power supply is make sure you try another cable because sometimes the cables will go. They have a fuse in them. Sometimes the fuse is gone. You want to make sure you try a different outlet on your wall. Make sure that it's not the outlet that's causing the problem. And if that all fails, then you can try swapping a power supply. Now, obviously, as I run this computer business, I have loads of power supply spare that I can use for testing, so let's do that right away. So we've got uh, another TX650M here, which I handily had lying around. So let's give this one a go. So if you're gonna repair computers yourself and you wanna test out a new power supply, don't take the old one out just yet. You can always just run this one on the desk here before having to swap it around. It's gonna save you a lot of labor if in fact it's not the power supply that's at fault. So all we need to get the computer up and running is the CPU cable, the motherboard cable and one for the graphics card as well. So those two are semi already uh, wired in and we've got a modular cable here for the graphics card. So let's just pop that one in and then we're gonna hook everything up. So firstly that involves just taking out the cables 
full of power that are already there. Now, without the SATA cable in there, without the SATA cable in there, the lighting on the fans might not work. So that's something to bear in mind. But the actual fan speed, hopefully that will work. I can't remember if this one uses a hub or if it just goes into the motherboard itself directly. That top left CPU cable is always the most pain in the ass one to get to if you're having to take a power supply out. God, this is so awkward. This is what the real, this is what the most YouTube videos don't show you is how bloody awkward it is having to change this cable over, especially when you've got a tower air cooler in there like we do today. Oh, success, finally got that cable in. Now let's do the 24 pin. We're gonna see whether this is actually gonna allow the PC to boot, and then we would have found our problem right away. Obviously the thing looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but guys, this is just for testing. It's, it's not final. Now let's plug in the power supply using our power cable from the wall, and we're gonna see if we get some beautiful lights. No, so we don't have any power at all. That is most unusual. I really thought it was gonna be the power supply. It's time for a quick check-in. So what have we tried? We've tried doing clear CMOS, we've tried changing the memory, and now we've also tried a power supply, and none of that seems to have worked. Now what am I thinking is causing this PC not to boot? So have a graphics card not causing a PC to boot is very, very unusual, and I would be shocked if that's the case. What I'm thinking mainly is it's either gonna be the CPU or the motherboard. Now, out of those two, I think the motherboard is going to be more likely because if you've got at least some power going to the system, you'll get the CPU debug light that's gonna tell you that the CPU's not working. Whereas if you're not getting any lights, no power at all, then that's gonna point me towards the motherboard, which is really annoying because the motherboard is probably the most pain in the ass bit of a computer to swap around. But hey, that's what we signed up for when we started this business, so let's hop to it. Okay, so it's time to get this motherboard out of here. And that sadly means unplugging all the bits. So let's take out this Wi-Fi card. Go, we've extracted those, Wi-Fi card. So let's pop that to the side. Next thing to take out is GPU. The GPU is out. Now the thing to do is to clear out all the other cables. So we've got an ARGB at the top. We've got a fan here. We've got HD audio down here. Oof. We've got USB 3.0. Wiggle that slowly out. And we've got our front panel connectors. So now that we're sure that all our cables are out, we can unscrew the board. So let's do that. Oh, gosh. What a massive pain in the iris that was, bloody hell. Let's take the case aside for just a moment and we can do a quick on-table test with the new motherboard. And I think perhaps actually it might be a good idea to just quickly test the power button by bridging the button because it's something I forgot to do earlier and I'd feel like a bit of a fool if I did all this effort just to realize it was a power button that was faulty. We don't need a GPU to test the power so let's just go ahead with what we got there. Power supply is on. Let's just try a quick jump. So we've got no RGB LEDs coming from this, and we've got our fan for our cooler plugged in, which also isn't doing anything. So I think we can be pretty confident that it's not the power button on the case that's causing the problem. We're gonna transfer this into the motherboard box which is underneath, which is a slight upgrade actually, B450 Aorus Elite AX V2. I'm gonna swap that round uh, and as a bonus, I guess, we get to keep this Wi-Fi card because the new board's got the Wi-Fi built in. So let's go for it. And we can use our Phillips number one screwdriver to take out that M2 screw. Now this is gonna be really fun. This cooler, this, uh, this Xilence cooler, don't ever buy these, right? They're great coolers, they're like 18 quid and they do a pretty good job. But the mounting mechanism is absolutely, well, it's just terrible. There's no other word for it, really. It's really awkward. I hate it when this happens. So I can see already that it's pulling the CPU out the socket with it, which is really freaking annoying. I hate it when it does that. So I'm actually going to hook it back over. Ugh, God, that's annoying. I'll be back in a second with a hairdryer. I'm going to explain why I've got a hairdryer. Okay. So the reason why your CPU might come out stuck to your cooler is because once the PC's not been run for a while, that thermal paste gets quite hard when it cools. So by heating it up with a hairdryer, we're gonna make it a little bit more liquid. It's gonna make it a bit easier to take the cooler off 
without also bringing the CPU up with it. Does that make sense? Hopefully, because I can't explain it any clearer. So let's go. Okay. Right, let's see how we do with getting that out. Let's zoom your bag in. There we go. Okay, so it may work, it may not, but the cooler's feeling nice and warm in general, which means the heat is going through. Hopefully that softened the thermal paste enough. God, that's quite hot actually. Hopefully it softened it enough that we can get the CPU out. Oh God, thank fuck. Oh, it's, no! <laughs> it's still pulling the bloody CPU out. That's it, well, it is what it is. I'm not gonna get it out any other way. So, we... <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's focus that in. Jesus, look at that. You hate to see that, man. That is unfortunate. And look at my, look at my hands. My hands are completely effed from doing that as well. It actually looks like the pins are in pretty good condition. I can't see any that are, that are bent, actually. So it, it seems to have survived being wrenched out of its socket. Let's give the hairdryer another blast. Now hopefully, with a little bit of a twist, this will just smoothly come off. There we go, beautiful. Lovely stuff. So I'm taking thermal paste off. Normally just get a bit of paper towel. I'm gonna to use our piece of tissue paper here just to get, just, we're not gonna apply any downward pressure because we're using our left hand to keep it still. We're just gonna get the worst of that thermal paste off. Now we're gonna get our isopropyl alcohol. So we've got our isopropyl alcohol and we're just gonna give it a good wipe. Wipe it on up. Now, what to do about a problem like Maria, or not Maria in this case, in this case, a pretty tower cooler. Uh, this thing is going straight in the bin because there's just no way I'm using this mounting mechanism again. You're just guaranteed to damage your CPU if you ever take it out of the socket. Okay, so yeah, like we were saying, we've got the CPU in and we just want to check that there's power actually going to it. So we're gonna hook up our power supply now without putting a cooler on it. All we're doing is seeing that it's actually going to boot. Right, let's get our screwdriver. Let's check. Hey, look at that. So you can see our fan is spinning here. That means we've got power. Now I don't want to overheat that CPU, so let's turn that off straight away. We've basically solved the issue that we were hoping to solve in the start, weren't we? We're trying to get power, we've now got power. So all that remains to be done, putting it all back together again, rebuilding it with this new motherboard. One thing that we can do while we wait is pop our M2 SSD in. So let's do that. Whenever I've got a Gen 3 SSD, I always put it in the bottom slot, especially on B550s, because that's going to leave your top slot free if you want to expand to a PCIe 4 in the future. So we've got our CPU back in now that it's dried off a bit, and we need to put a cooler on it. There's no way I'm putting that other one on. I've already chucked it out. So we're going with this Vetru V5. Bane of every PC builder's life is getting these bloody clips to fit onto your tower coolers. Beautiful. We'll hook up the RGB in a minute. We'll do that once it's in the case. So SSD in, CPU, cooler, RAM, done. Time to get it in the case. So now that our motherboard is fully assembled with the new cooler, we've got our case here. Something really important to think about when you're putting a motherboard back into a case after swapping it, is that you've got loads of cables hanging out all over the place. You've got this one, you've got all the other ones. Make sure that you're not laying your motherboard on top of it as you screw it down, because it's gonna make your life a real difficult situation. So clear the cables, put the board in, should be good to go. Let's get on with it. So it's probably about, oh, well, it'll take us about an hour, hour and a bit. Hopefully we're now sorted. Let's power it on, see if it actually does power on, see if we fixed our problem. Moment of truth time, guys. I'm gonna hear spinning. Don't see any lights yet. There's the lights, baby. We're back in business. Now, of course, all this tells us is that it's powered on. We don't know if it's actually any good. So we're gonna to need to hook up a monitor and see what's Gucci with this PC. Would help if I actually plug the fricking keyboard in. This is what you don't see on YouTube, guys. The number of times people F it up. Right, why to reset the TPM? There we go. BIOS has been reset. Please config your BIOS setup, fine. All right, so we're gonna update first. So Q flash is F8, so we're gonna click F8, update BIOS. It's our Kingston stick. We've got our BIOS version there, so let's uh, press enter, press enter, update. The BIOS update is now complete. We're gonna turn on our XMP as the first thing to do, just because on this screen it's the easiest way to find it. We can see our CPU temperature sitting nicely at around 30. 
pretty much what you'd expect uh, with any kind of cooler on there, really, even a stock cooler in the BIOS. That's fine. We're going to navigate over and go to advanced mode. We're going to go to settings, platform power. Now we're going to turn ERP on because on gigabyte motherboards, you might notice that sometimes when you turn the computer off, you've still got RGB LEDs on. By enabling this, that means that those RGBs aren't going to be on when your PC is shut down. In IO ports, we're going to find resize bar support. We're going to set it to auto and that's going to automatically enable 4G decoding. And that's pretty much everything you need to do here apart from the fan curve. So let's do that. So we go to F6 to open up the fan curve. So for the CPU fan, this is actually our case fans, which is a little bit confusing. We're going to set it to PWM control because it's a PWM hub. And I tend to put about 90 degrees, 100%, and then just a short cascade like this. And I like them to idle at about 40% roughly. I'm going to apply this to all the fans. And then I'm going to go find my system fan, whichever one is that the CPU cooler is connected to. So it's system fan two. I can tell because I know I've only got two fan plugs in and this is the other one here and I can see there's a fan speed being reported. So we're going to put that on PWM. We're going to change the input to CPU. I'm just going to raise this slightly just so we've got a slightly more base speed on the CPU cooler. That's going to mean that the case fans don't ramp up quite as quickly. So it's always going to be about 50%, which is still pretty nice and quiet around 1000 RPM. So now that's done, we go to the save and exit tab. I like to save a profile here. So we're going to call this one PC36 because that's what the company's called, but you can call it whatever you want. And then we're going to go to save and exit setup. So that's now done. Now on this PC, we already had Windows installed on the SSD. So hopefully it's just going to go back into Windows and everything's going to be fine. Um, but if you're doing this for the first time, you might have to reinstall Windows again, of course, but we'll see. We'll see what the PC does when it reloads. There we go. Nicely working again. Now you might have noticed it said JCPC. That is the old name of the business. So we are going to reinstall Windows anyway. I just wanted to show you that indeed it was actually working uh, pretty nicely. So there we go. PC fixed. And it turned out in the end it was the motherboard. Now the motherboard is something that people think goes wrong with their computer all the time. But I found actually it's quite rare for it to break. Most cases it's the RAM or the power supply that goes first but it shows having that systematic approach to doing any kind of repair work it means you go through everything in a logical approach and you don't miss anything. Now this is obviously a different style of video to normal, so if you liked it, please tell me in the comments below. Put any other tips and tricks you've got down there as well to help out the community. And I'll see you in the next video. And also, subscribe. Please.